Hello everybody, welcome back to another video now. Um, this is gonna be another movie review video. I'm posting on an unusual day or anything because I haven't done one in a while now. So, I have, I've gotten a community guideline strike for an old video I did. For an old video by like a couple of years. So, yeah, I was <laughs> taken down from YouTube for like a, a week. And that was about it, and now I'm back, so. Now, finally, I'm going to be doing another movie review. Now, I gotta watch what I say, though, in this movie review. In this video, I'm gonna try to make any inappropriate scenes possibly, uh, fewer detailed. Alright? If that's a, even a thing I can do. So, movie review is going to be tough for this movie all right so this is the movie review for probably one of my favorite movies of 2022 we are going to be looking at bullet train now this movie i honestly have to say the performances was spot on awesome the performances were really well done and everything and one of the reasons why this movie was criticized is because it's based upon a japanese story called bullet train and people can Confused, well, people confused that the fact of it being is that most of the cast members were American or English. Not many characters were Japanese in this movie. That's the reason why I got criticized for its, uh, for its moments and everything. But honestly, I think that this movie, despite that flaw, this movie is by far probably one of the best movies of last year. And I feel like it was a bit underrated. Because it's just, every character gets their point in the story. Every character gets their one moment. The big moment in everything. This movie has it, all of it combines into one big story and everything. So, let's get started, will we? Alright, so we are introduced at the very beginning of the movie. We see the father. That's what they call him, the father in, uh, in the hospital. After his son was pushed off the roof by unknown person. So, then the elder comes walking in. And tells him that he's got to be careful and everything. And that they don't know what's going to be next. What could happen next they don't know about and everything. And on the TV at the same time we hear that a snake was stolen. A snake with a very poisonous venom. And, uh, yeah. That's the opening scene. We get introduced. Apparently, um, the father is actually getting ready. He grabs his gun and it goes into the next scene in which we are introduced to Lady uh, Ladybug, who is played by Brad Pitt in a pretty funny performance. And uh, he's talking to Maria Beetle, apparently. In the, in the book, that's at least what they call her. And you do hear him say Maria at some point in the movie. So, yeah. And she's played, uh, she's played by Sandra Bullock, and uh, in a pretty uh, interesting performance because she's uh, most of the movie is just her voice. So uh, most of her of the movie, whenever she's in it, it's just a it's just her voice. She's only in the movie for the last like I think not even the last five minutes. She's not even in the movie for the last five minutes. So yeah, but the next scene introduces him. He's walking through the city. He announces that. Uh, well, he's walking through the city of Japan and everything, and he he tells her that most of the times it's just bad luck and everything, and that apparently uh, he was picked second to a guy named Carter, which, of course, Ladybug absolutely hates, because after all, I mean, he's better at everything. He's kind of like a suck-up, pretty much. So, he's given a whole deal about he doesn't like Carter and everything, and he also says that every time, every single time he's brought onto a mission, everything goes wrong and everything like that. So, he... He eventually drops his ticket after bumping into somebody, in which was the, is the father. The father from earlier on in the movie, which I, don't, I think they actually said his name and everything, but I can't really remember, but... He's introduced at the beginning of the movie as the father. So, yeah. But, yeah. And, uh, the elder. 
we never find out his name, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, Ladybug bumps into the father at the terminal and uh, drops his ticket and his key, in which he's able to get into his locker and everything without the key, because he has to get the pin and everything like that, which he refu he takes everything, but he refuses to take the gun, because apparently he does not like guns. So, he likes to do things with hands. So, which, honestly, I really like that about this movie. I accidentally, my phone's plugged in and I accidentally pulled the, the phone. But either way, I really like how most of this movie's not taking place with guns. Guns are not a big part of this movie until the very, very end. Literally, guns are important at the very last minute. Because most of the times, whenever there's a gun shown, it's not even, it's barely fired. It's not even fired. There is actually one scene in the movie, though, that does involve guns and swords. So it's a pretty graphic scene. Uh, but it's really funny, though. But either way, next scene, he, he takes everything. He gets on the, on the train at the last minute. He gets on. He really likes it so far. So he's, like, looking around. He, apparently, they give... The mission is that he's supposed to get onto this train and steal a briefcase, which is owned by two owners who are who are known as the twins, in which their name their names, which they go by code names, are Lemon and Tangerine, in which um, they're twins. All right, one's white, one's black, but they're twins. All right, don't question it. And uh, they're played by greatly by Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry. And probably some, one of the best performances from both of them. It's They play such likable characters that it's just... It's hard not to watch this movie. It's literally funny whenever they're there and everything like that. And it's always enjoyable. It's always enjoyable whenever they are on screen. In which that's the next scene. They actually... We are introduced to the father again. He's like walking down the aisle. Trying to get to his seat and everything. But he keeps like... It's like he's blacking out. And uh, he bumps into, like, the cart and everything. And the waitress that's walking up and down the train is handing everybody food and everything. You got to pay for it, though, of course, because, yeah, after all, you're on a bullet train. So right when that happens and everything, we are introduced to Lemon and Tangerine because Tangerine decides to steal something off the cart. So, yeah, it's a pretty funny scene. And I definitely recommend everybody to watch it because it's actually pretty funny and then he's like saying on how he doesn't know why he, he every single time he sees something he wants to steal it and everything so there's that whole scene and um they start discussing code names and they're like arguing about why they're called each other like why lemons call lemon and everything and he's just like because you're sour and nobody likes lemons and everything like that so there's that whole moment and uh then you find out that he's got the White Death's son, in which the White Death is a... We are introduced to him later on and everything. We are told about him right at this fun point, all right? He's he's the White Death's son. Everything, he's labeled as the son, if I'm not mistaken. So he wakes up. They sit him down at, the, at one of the window seats and everything. They say to him... Well, they pretty much tell him that he, they are trying, they're going to be delivering him to his father with the case, with all the money, which is the briefcase and everything, because the White Death wants his money, in which all of them are told that they're getting money. So, just to let you know, the briefcase... They're going to be fighting over it because that's pretty much the whole movie. They're literally fighting over the briefcase for the majority of the movie. And it's it's actually, it gets really interesting though. Honestly, at this point, he tells them that the White Death has hired them to pretty much uh, bring him to his father. Well, to the White Death, of course. And uh, also to deliver the briefcase with all the money in it. But then they argue about how they think they killed 16 people and everything. And he's like, oh, we killed 17 and everything like that. 
and then uh, it turns out to be 17 and that Tangerine was right because apparently they killed they accidentally killed one of the homeless no one of the people on this on the street just trying to help out and he turns out I'm pretty sure he's actually the director of the movie that actually he went to help somebody in a vehicle and everything and the vehicle blew up so 17 people died apparently so at that point though uh he eventually we reveal that apparently lemon is a huge thomas the tank engine fan and everything and everybody's annoyed by how he always brings up thomas the tank engine but he brings it up in a smart way in which i actually started to respect thomas the tank engine after watching this movie i'm it's a kid's show. It's a really, really nostalgic show for me. So it's kind of funny that he brought up Thomas the Tank Engine. And also because the movie's Bullet Train. I mean, it's all based on trains. So it's almost as bad as watching planes, trains, and automobiles. There's, there's trains in it, all right? So Bullet Train is probably one of the best movies on a train that I've ever seen. The Polar Express has some really choppy lines and everything that are, some of them are just bad and the animation is just, eh, it's mid. But either way, Bullet Train, there's, okay, so he starts revealing that apparently he's like saying, oh, that uh, the sun is pretty much the damsel in distress and everything and that he's Percy. He claims that he's Percy and everything and he also tells them that nobody likes a diesel in which the diesel is the worst one because they're unreliable they always bluff and everything like that and it's just they're always up to trouble always up to mischief so since they're mischievous that's the whole thing so yeah he gives his whole ordeal and everything and ladybug finds the briefcase while i'm pretty sure they're arguing about it and everything Oh no, at this point, uh, the father walks into one of the train cars and everything, and he runs into this young girl who turns out to be the one who pushed his son off the, off the building of the, of the pharmacy and everything, which it's only a quick scene and everything. We find out that it's her the whole time because she tases him and, uh, it reveals her name is the prince because apparently they, let's just say the, the parents did not want a girl. And they wanted the boy and everything. And that's why they call her the prince. And you know that she's a girl. So it's kind of ironic in a way. That's why they, they fill this movie with irony the whole time. Like on how Ladybug is supposed to be lucky. And he's not lucky the entire time. The whole movie is just. He just messes everything up on everybody. So that's one of my favorite parts about this movie. One of my favorite elements is that. Ladybug always messes the things up. That they, it, all the most important important things that they're supposed to be doing, everything just goes wrong. It, it's a train that goes off the rails. This movie goes off the rails. It's just, it's funny and everything. That's probably the reason why people did not like it in certain ways is because it was too funny and that it was it was originally supposed to be action packed. Because in the story, it's supposedly action-packed and everything. And they're not bringing up Tom as the tank engine because the story, if I'm not mistaken, the story came out right when Thomas was just getting started. And literally, why would they do that right when it's getting started? Uh, it's kind of understandable why they would, but I'm just trying to bring up a point that I don't myself understand. All right? Just fuck the point and let's continue either way um so we find that out we get, we get to meet the prince we, uh, the father finds out who pushed the son off the roof and everything and the next scene we introduced uh, we get introduced to ladybug who walks by lemon and tangerine fighting if i'm not mistaken Okay, I might be I might be confusing him. No, no, I I'm not. All right. So he walks by, he finds the briefcase, he takes it off the shelf and he tries to walk out with it. And everything. So, yeah. And then when 
Lemon and Tangerine are talking and everything like that. Well, he, uh, Tangerine gets a phone call and everything, and he's, well, no, he's, he starts talking about what they have and everything, what they're supposed to be doing and everything like that, and then he's asking, where's the case and everything, and Lemon goes to grab it and everything, and at that time when he goes to grab it, Tangerine immediately gets a phone call that says, okay, you're going to be at the next station with the case and everything, and, he, and then they ask him, do you have the case and do you have the son and everything, and he says yes to both questions, and then he, he sees Lemon throwing things around, looking for it, and you see that apparently he is really mad, so... Tangerine hangs up the phone and he goes over to talk to him and everything and he reveals that somebody st stole the case and everything and while uh, while Ladybug goes to get off the train he's immediately encountered by the wolf in which we immediately get cut to and immediately he he pulls out his knife right away and he like half it cuts to past him like he lifts up the knife and then it cuts out and then it goes right to the prince again in which uh, the father apparently is knocked unconscious and everything and she plots for him to apparently kill the white death and he knows it's impossible and everything and she's holding him hostage because after all i mean she has a spy that is watching his son at the moment so that's the reason why uh That's the whole thing right there. And then uh, it goes to the next scene where it introduces the wolf. Apparently, he was as a kid. He got the ne he got a necklace of a wolf and everything. And then he started getting some business where they would have him kill people. Mainly, he was a hitman pretty much, and a uh, person who traffic all these money, all this money and everything. And he would do it. And uh, he fell he fell in love at some point and everything. And Eventually, when they got married, everybody at the wedding just started puking up blood. And blood just poured out every orifice on that face, pretty much. You just see all that. But it comes out everywhere, pretty much. And he's he his wife dies and everything. Well, his fiance, I mean, at the wedding and everything. So... His fiance. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to call him his wife because honestly it seems a little fucked up if I don't. So yeah, his wife starts bleeding out and everything and stuff like that. And he's he's all upset from, from it and he wants to know who did it. So he knows that they're going to be on the train though. So immediately. And apparently Ladybug was at the, at the freaking wedding because after all, I mean, he was the bartender. So that's the reason why... Well, he was the waiter. He was the waiter. But either way, that's why he recognized him. So, as soon as the wolf arrives at the train, he gets ready. And then he... He immediately tries to stab him in the chest and everything. And he, accident he stabs his phone... In which uh, there's a huge fight scene and everything where he's literally, Ladybug is dodging everything like a freaking badass because Brad Pitt, he's he's just a freaking awesome guy and everything. He's literally one of the best actors in Hollywood. Honestly, I, I arguably say that Brad Pitt's one of the best. And honestly, this one scene where he's like dodging, it's just so awesome. And then... Uh, Eventually, he just he sticks the briefcase in the way of his face and everything just to make sure that it, he doesn't uh, just to dodge the freaking knife because he throws the knife at him, but it bounces right off the briefcase and hits him right in the heart in which he he says my heart and like in Spanish and everything and then he falls backwards on the case which he snaps his neck, which is a freaking double whammy, but it's laugh out loud hilarious that you're like, are you kidding me? Like, that's the worst way to go. Um, he grabs the briefcase and he puts it in the trash can and everything. And then, uh, we are, uh, we're also, I forgot to mention, we are introduced to the white death storyline, which of course, 
after they find the White Death's son dead with the blood pouring out of his eyes, we get introduced to the White Death's backstory, in which apparently he he went to Japan one time. He was like some Russian dude that went to Japan and uh, became the leader's most trusted guy and everything. And then eventually, he the leader actually was betrayed by him, and uh, he did a game of Russian roulette, and then he blew his brains out so he blew his brains out using russian roulette as his way of killing him so then he became and then he rose to power as the next person in charge in which uh his empire rose pretty much and uh yeah that's pretty much what happens and they said the last person that double crossed him got their hands cut off in which that's the one thing that they don't want to do right now and that they were hired because apparently they were responsible for the bolivia job in which was basically them killing a whole bunch of guys which i i immediately from the beginning of this scene i was like responsible that's a really tough word and everything, but that's exactly what he says. Responsible, which you only use that when you're mad at somebody, pretty much. You're just like, responsible. Like, okay, this is the guy that was, that pretty much did it and everything. Like, they just went in and killed a whole bunch of guys, which turned out to be the White Deaths guys and everything. And they were hired on the train because they wanted everybody to kill each other. Just to tell you that, because honestly, that's the plot twist at the end. And I'm saying that early because, I mean, it only makes sense at this point. So, after all, the backstory and everything, they keep... <laughs> Lemon keeps bringing up Thomas the Tank Engine, saying that, that the guy is definitely a diesel and everything. And he's just like... He tells him, you go one way on the train and I'll go the other way. And apparently, uh, well, no, he, okay. Ladybug is wandering through the train and he encounters Lemon at the door in which he immediately recognizes him. So, he goes the other direction, which the, the the person collecting tickets does not want him on the train because, after all, I mean, he doesn't have his ticket and everything. So, in which he used his receipt as evidence, and he, they told him only one stop and everything. He's still on the train. So, but spoiler, he's on the train the whole movie. Because why would you know, why would pay, somebody pay an hour and ten minutes of, of barely anything happening? But either way, um. He doesn't get off the train even though he really wants to because after all, I mean, Lemon's at the freaking door and he has the briefcase on him. Actually, yeah, I think he has the briefcase on him at this point. He didn't put it in the trash yet. But either way, he tries to get off the train and instead he, he recognizes him and he also sees the other one too. So he pretty much hides in one of the, one of the rooms on the train and everything. In which uh, Tangerine does not recognize him when uh, when he encounters Tangerine and everything. Tangerine doesn't recognize him. He doesn't think that he's the one that stole the case and everything. So basically, Tangerine walks down the aisle and everything. He starts cursing and everything, and then he's like, he reveals that it well he he basically does not want to swear in front of kids and everything so he's just like oh i didn't know that there was a kid here and everything like that and she the prince and then he he's just like he asks them if they saw somebody with the briefcase and everything and she immediately gives the ladybug up by saying no oh, he's a he's the black frame glasses guy who went that way and everything and he immediately goes back to try to find him and uh he alerts lemon in which okay he did leave the briefcase in the trash at this point he did so and that was after he encountered lemon he put he put the thing in the k k trash and everything and then uh the whole tangerine thing and then uh he encounters lemon 
and he tells him that there's a gun under the seat and everything, and he tells him it's the quiet car and everything, that you cannot talk in the quiet car. Well, you can't talk loud, at least. And, uh, he pretty much starts fucking with him, and then, uh, eventually, he reveals that there's no gun under the seat and everything, and Ladybug just wants to call her a truce, pretty much. He's like, tells him that the, that the, the case is in the trash and everything, but... But Lemon ain't falling for it because after all, I mean, the White Death's son just died and everything on the train and everything. He was killed. So he immediately thinks that he was the one that killed him. So Lemon and him get into a fight and everything and Ladybug knocks him out. And at the same time, there's this one lady, one Karen that keeps shushing them. And eventually, Brad Pitt just curses at her and in a really funny scene and... Lemon gets knocked out, yeah. And at the same time, he takes the sleeping powder from before that Maria did tell him that put somebody in a hernia or like a coma or something. And so he decides to put all the sleeping powder into his water in which, uh, yeah, there's that whole scene and everything. And, uh, since he did that, why do I hear beeping? I just hear a lot of beeping. What the hell? Either way, um, just that whole fight scene and everything. And then Tangerine finds Lemon. He wakes him up, asks him questions and everything. It reveals that that apparently he took his gun and everything, which actually he. Ladybug grabbed Lemon's gun, put it right above him, he took it apart, and he hid it on the suitcases right above him on the train. So, we don't see, see from that gun ever again. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> There's no information about that gun until later, like, any anymore, pretty much. He just says that it was his favorite gun, and that he, he wants to kill him next. So, they... They both separate and everything, and I'm pretty sure the next scene, um, the prince t uh, tells the father to like try to open up the briefcase and everything, and eventually, he won't lock it, and uh, so that she can pretty much plant a bomb inside the briefcase, in which she doesn't know that. Well, he doesn't know that, and then she reveals that. She did that to the gun that he pretty much had and everything, so. Mainly to make it so, apparently, every single person that went up against White Death was executed by their own weapons, so he, she makes it so she put a bomb in the, in the gun so that when he is about to get executed, the White Death, it backfires on him, so. Ah, uh, man. My neck is hurting. But either way, the next scene, though, we get to see. Yeah, apparently, uh, Ladybug. He's in the bathroom talking to Maria and everything while people keep knocking on the door, some lady and everything. And then eventually, it turns out to be Tangerine the third time around. Third time around. Tangerine is the one knocking at the door in which he opens up the door and he reveals that he tracked his phone and he tracked Lemon's phone because he took the phone because the first phone got stabbed by the wolf in which uh, he has to use <laughs> freaking Tan uh, Lemon's phone Lemon, that's what I meant Lemon's phone in which literally they get into a fight and everything, and then they end up in a, in the snack bar, pretty much, and the uh, with all the drinks and everything. They they start fighting and everything, and then the the lady that goes up and down the aisle selling food, she comes walking in to restock the cart, and uh, they stop fighting and everything. In which I'm still questioning why she did not notice that the cabinets were smashed, because literally, Aaron Taylor Johnson was doing freaking. He was doing freaking karate moves there. That was pretty freaking badass. 
I mean, he had the brass knuckles on, so that kind of helped in a way smash the cabinets. And the cabinets were made with like this kind of wood that is really easy to break. So, at least in Japanese standards. I'm not saying it's cheap, I'm just saying they use a certain type of wood. But either way, um, they get into a fight to the point where they, they literally they stop fighting for like this one quick second in which they the lady asks them if they want anything and Ladybug gra uh, buys a bottle of water with Tangerine's money. Tangerine is just because after all, early in the movie, a ladybug paid a guy, played by played by an uncredited Channing Tatum, to wear his outfit and everything while he freaking put firecrackers in the background to bake it. So he distracted Tangerine from finding him. So yeah, there's that whole scene. And then literally... They get, they get into the fight right afterwards as well when she walks away and everything because he throws the bottle of water at him and literally they open up the escape door where they literally go almost flying out of the train and uh, they find their way back onto the train and they stop when a phone call happens and it's apparently from the White Death in which the White Death tells them to meet at the next station and everything in which uh, Ladybug, disguised as as Lemon, apparently, because they've never even met Lemon. So he went out with Tangerine, and they pretended to have the case and everything, in which literally Tangerine, <laughs> he's, he's pretty much playing it off pretty good, and then all of a sudden Ladybug... He he has the briefcase and he he pretty much dr drags his fingers across the uh, the padlock and it unlocks and literally they find out that he pretty much was playing them that time and everything. So then literally he they get to the next station and. Uh, And literally Ladybug pushes Tangerine off the train and Tangerine jumps on the train and everything and Lemon I'm pretty sure he he's like he finds the prince and the father both uh, at one point in the train and he finds out that they are a little too suspicious or in common words these days they were a little sus and uh well let's just say the father gets shot and yeah that means that that whole thing happens and after he gets shot and everything so Lemon grabs the prince's bag and looks through it for a quick second because he sees a gun and he pulls out the gun and he immediately knows that she's the diesel and everything but he collapses from the sleeping powder in the water from drinking it just a second before he killed well he, he shot uh, the father the father survives but either way right at that point he collapses onto the ground in which uh, she hides him in the uh, well she shoots him and hides him in the friggin bathroom so yeah there's that and yeah so, at this point, Tangerine gets back onto the train, and uh, he finds him in the bathroom, and he grabs, his, he puts his necklace on him. 
Either way, the next scene of the movie is, um... I have actually forgot what point I was in this movie. Because after all, I mean, I just got distracted, so... Okay, so yeah, Tangerine finds him, uh, finds Lemon in the bathroom, and puts takes his necklace off and puts it on him, and uh, he goes to try to find, uh, basically try to find Ladybug, in which he runs into the prince and everything, and uh, the prince pretty much plays him, saying that Ladybug was gonna use him for hostage, or use her for hostage and everything, but then it turns out. That before Lemon collapsed on the ground and sh and she shot him, he put the diesel sticker right on her back, in which he had the D Thomas the Tank Engine stickers and everything. He put the diesel sticker right on her back, in which what happens? Tangerine immediately knows, and he immediately he calls her a diesel and he threatens to shoot her, but the ladybug comes in and. And, and Tangerine accidentally gets shot and he dies. So, and then... And then Ladybug and, and the Prince are the last ones on the train and everything. And eventually when they get to one of the stations, she, she accidentally... Well, not accidentally, accidentally freaking gets her bag stuck and everything. So then Ladybug tries to get off the train, but she, she pretty much convinces them to get back on the train and... They pretty much get to the once they get to the next station. The elder comes onto the train after a phone call earlier in the movie saying that apparently the father left his phone on the bullet train because apparently Ladybug, let's just say Ladybug, told him that he can pick it up at the at. Kyoto Station, I'm pretty sure that's the right station, I'm pretty sure they said. So, um, but either way, the elder gets onto the train and sits one seat from them, pretty much. And, uh, earlier in the movie, let's just say the snake nearly attacked Ladybug, and, uh, in which he literally, you see his slithering around the the whole train, the whole mo movie and everything. We also find out that the Hornet was the one stabbing everybody with a needle that had this, this, the venom from the snake that literally makes you bleed out of every orifice of your body. Everything, the Hornet dies too. And, uh, literally, the, he actually got the antidote in him because, after all, I mean, she's, she did stab him in the hand with the, with the venom stuff and everything, and she literally had one antidote and, he pretty much forced it into his body by pulling her hand towards him and she stabbed him in the neck with the antidote and uh, she started bleeding out so that's how that happened and everything but right at this point because he has the antidote in his body he's gonna survive this literally he gets bit by the snake because it's crawling around the, that area so so that area of the train the snake is crawling around and uh, yeah. So at this point, he goes into the bathroom and he locks the snake in the toilet. And he pretty much dealt. Uh, that's when the prince actually gets interrogated by the elder at the same time. And because he hears, be honest, which is what she says to his son, in which. In which, right, the, uh, right before he sits down, right next to them, that's what she says to Ladybug. In which he immediately knows that she's the one who pushes, pushed the sun off the roof. In which uh, he interrogates her. She runs off and uh, Ladybug sits down. He gives him a whole monologue. Apparently he was the one that worked for the boss that the White Death killed. And apparently he lost his family to the White Death. And that he only has a son and his son's son left. So he pretty much says that fate is responsible for everything. And... And they discuss that why Ladybug is called Ladybug. Apparently, he's lucky and everything. Which he, he, Ladybug himself is like saying that it was all a bit of irony and everything. But the elder thinks it's more than that. And literally, um, the next scene, they get to the state. Uh, well, they no, they find uh, 
they find the son in well the father in the uh in the bathroom with lemon and everything lemon wakes up which apparently he was shot in a bulletproof vest he wore a bulletproof vest and they actually mentioned earlier in the movie if you're paying attention they mentioned earlier that he has a bulletproof vest on and uh because after all i mean it does take place later on in the movie you realize oh yeah he had he had the bulletproof vest on they did mention it earlier so so yeah and then uh that was actually funny they actually used the sony bing thing and then talk about sony movie right here and then uh at this point in the movie though they find them and lemon he sees the necklace wrapped around his neck and he asks where his brother is in which he's this is literally an emotional scene where he's literally sitting next to his brother's corpse he literally gives him the Thomas thicker and then he literally gets so mad to the point where he literally threatens ladybug and everything they get into a fight and everything and then eventually Eventually, the elder tells them both to shut up with a metaphor, pretty much. And the metaphor is all about the White Death and everything. And then he's like, he's saying that they got to get prepared and everything. So they're using all the weapons they got. And uh, once they get to the station, Ladybug's the first one to get off the train. He pretty much hands the White Death his, his uh, briefcase. In which, uh, that was right after the White Death approached her, his daughter which his daughter has the the gun that blows up in his face but he does not fire the gun after he takes it from her instead he keeps it so yeah then at this point he grabs the briefcase he reveals that it was all set up for carter in which card is not there and instead he had a stomach problem and uh, it's a funny scene and everything and literally the briefcase blows up and ladybug goes flying back onto the train and at the same point uh, lemon gets the train started at the same time and the white death actually is on the on the train as well and um there's a huge fight scene and everything with them where there's people getting murdered and everything and the elder and the white death get into a huge fight and everything in which um, in which literally the elder almost dies several times and then and um, ladybug and lemon are both at the front of the train and they're both like pretty much discussing what's going on and everything they are trying to figure out how to drive the bullet train while they get attacked right in the front of the train and everything well right while the train's going they can't slow it down and everything so ladybug f finds the manual and he has to go through it to try to find the english one because they're in japan so the english one is right in, near the back of the book so apparently he has to look through it everything he finds the brakes part of the book and uh he accidentally it accidentally blows out the window so he literally loses that and oh, that whole thing happens and everything they're literally on the wrong track they literally destroy one other one of the trains one of the other trains destroys that train and that train is literally about to go off the rails and it does it goes off the rails right at that point uh the white death actually got in, like sliced up his body with the with the uh, with uh the elder sword so yeah that's actually a good name for a sword the elder sword that's actually really good um but either way he gets sliced right at the the right here and then uh literally the train goes flying off the rails and everything. Everybody's all right, pretty much. And the White Death still tries to to freaking 
kill Ladybug and everything, despite him not being the person and everything like that. So he tries firing him with his gun and everything, but his gun only had one bullet in it, and he wanted to pretty much shoot the uh, he pretty much wanted to shoot the elder with it, in which because they hit the brakes and everything, he accidentally missed and uh, he fired that one shot. So then he grabs the other gun. That literally blows up in his face, and that's how the white death dies. And then Ladybug still he's freaking puzzled by it and everything. So right when they're walking away, the prince is still alive. And she literally is about to kill them, and then what happens? They she freaking gets hit by a tangerine truck. Drove by Lemon, which is revealed in a post credit scene. Well, in a mid credit scene actually. And, uh, oh man. Maria comes to, uh, to see Ladybug and everything. Ladybug reveals that he does not want to do this stuff anymore and everything like that. And he's actually pleased that she'd help him out. She'd get there on time and everything like that. Or something like that. She was He was happy that she was there for him at that point. And, uh, literally... The car gets crushed. That she has like this really nice car, and it just gets crushed by power lines, by the power lines and everything. So, Ladybug's still looking at it like it's a good thing, because that's what she did. And um, yeah, that's that whole thing. And then that's pretty much the end of the movie. So yeah, I would still prefer you watch the movie because sometimes my I miss scenes. So yeah watch the movie i actually got the blu-ray right here it's worth watching I'm telling you it's actually on netflix right now watch it on netflix if you got the if you got a netflix subscription watch it it's worth it in every possible way so yeah that's the end of this movie review thank you guys so much for watching like subscribe and ring the bell to get notified from latest videos another movie review coming at least possibly sometime next week all right thank you guys so much for watching